All right, welcome back to our video companion study guide of the Andrew Loomis book, Figure Drawing for All It's Worth. And we're near the end, and this is our last chapter, and I thank you for watching. And if you haven't yet, please consider subscribing because it helps a small YouTuber like me get into the algorithm of the YouTube monster to compete with some of these amazing giants that are way better than me, but I know that I can strive to become as best as I can be. And the same for you, and you can strive for the best that you can be. And um, so today we're going to be going over the complete figure in the costume. Now, there's some things that he talks about how um, the folds affect the way it's draped on our, our bodies and the way the folds fall away, the forms underneath the shoulders, the breasts, the hips, the buttocks and the knees, the way it anchors, the way it flows the way it looks same thing with the male figure you know when he wears a suit what it looks like and the best way i can tell you how to draw fabric and draw clothing is to look at photographs and that's what we're going to be doing in this video we're going to be looking at photographs and learning how it falls on the figure so baron hogarth came out with a book called dynamic wrinkles and drapery and where he goes into the principles of the way clothes are bending and wrinkling, and thrusting, and you have anchor points. So Andrew Zumas doesn't really go into a lot of detail about how to draw the costume figure. And, but he does say one thing that's important, and that is, don't worry about every seam, every fold, every button, but try to understand the principles of the construction and interpret them correctly as you can. And because there's, there's no way to kill a drawing than to draw unrealistic fabric. But I highly recommend you look at photographs to try to give yourself a great idea of how to, to draw drapery. One thing I don't want to do in this chapter, like I did in the previous chapters, is copy exactly what he's got here. I want to take what he teaches and do it in your drawing from reference. And, um, but, you know, he says the best way to draw costume figure is to draw your figure and then draw the drapery as if it was transparent and studying from life because he doesn't go into great detail. He just says, you must be able to reconstruct a clothed figure. He says that rendering drapery is complicated and best, that the only skilled artisan can anticipate that what drapery will look like in any given instance. So he's saying, fate clothing will not sell a drawing. Make it a rule right now to learn this. So he's just saying, just see how it, it uh, falls. Rendering drapery is an articulation of planes and arranged in proper value. Planes, okay. Studying half tones and shadows, studying from life, and a brush and spider illustration. So I'm going to be taking this principle and, draw, and making a new drawing, this principle, making a new drawing, and then I'm going to do an ink and splatter splatter effect. So in researching the, the clothing and the fabric and the fashion of the day, I decided to go with the period that Andrew Loomis drew in, which is 1940s, because when I go into the 2000s and the 2020s, that fashion is just so whacked out. I mean, it really is. So I just wanted to go towards the, the period that he was drawing in. So I'm going to use reference for that to draw these these figures. So let's let's get into it and see where we can go with this. So let's see if we can do our eight eight heads high figure here. So it's um, one. Okay, now we got our skeleton frame. Let's go ahead and do our figure. I 
You know, one thing I've learned going through this book, my art has really changed the way I draw. It's really kind of impacted the way I lay down my lines. And I'm really, really happy that I did this because this book's been laying on my shelf for years. I've only opened it up for certain things. Shave off some of that torso. And the arm, the hand is going into a pocket. So I'm thinking do it in red. Figure out how that folds flow. So right away, um, the first thing I'm gonna draw is the collar. Collar. Simple enough. Then rest. There's really not a lot of folds here. It's kind of stiff, stiff clothing. There's not folds around the figure pretty, pretty sm nicely. I'm going to draw the sleeve. It always comes out just a little bit. Got um, shoulder. A cushion here. Now I have folds here, so there's like an anchor point, and you know everything comes out of that anchor, and that's that's from Bern, Bern Hogarth. Bern Hogarth teaches that. So there's an anchor right here. This flows like, like so. Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to be the collar around. It kind of um, comes down like that and it flows over. And you don't see a lot of the end results because of the contrast, like the end. The end um, <clears throat> of the fabric, because of the contrast, you don't see it. Your eyes don't see it. Then um, go ahead and with the shoulder cushions. I don't know what you call that. Sleeve. All right. So now we have like anchor points here. There's like something flowing. A long, we got the biggest one is right here. And then we have, it's like a, a ripple effect. Then it's here. But I would always recommend drawing fabric from life because you can trick your mind into thinking that it's something else when you're drawing it. And I'll show you how to do that later. Okay, so got that. Then we have like um, buttons. Or buttons. Lord. And 
you have a belt. So the belt, you just see like hints of it where it goes under the crease here. See the notches, the belt. You don't see the hand. Goes in. Then we have our dress down. Our pocket. Then we have our anchor points. Everything is pushing from from here. Everything is hanging from this area right here. And what I mean is from, you know, drawing um, looking at shapes as abstract, you can cut off right there and just use those shapes as a way of um, committing yourself to lay down those lines. Not looking at them as as forms of clothing, but as abstract shapes. Okay, so now we're going to be going into the rendering of the drapery, rendering drapery. And we're going to be using, for the next two drawings, I'm going to be using the stipple texture paper that we've been using for, for our, our past videos. So I'm going to go ahead and use a pencil to lightly draw in our figure. I always start with the head. And then if I need to adjust it, I'll... I'll uh, I'll move it with our torso and our mannequin frame. Um, his hand is coming out, so I'm going to go ahead and draw the hand in relation to where the head is. Close to it, and then to connect the arm. Sitting down, so we have like a the C shape. Remember when we did the uh, the sitting figures? We have a C shape. So look at the C shape, kind of like this. Be so sitting down. Or uh, I can frame the hips. And you really don't see the. You really don't see the leg. And you really don't see this leg. So I'm going to go ahead and draw this arm. In to this, it's somewhere around here. Connect it. Um, so, like I said, now that I have these in, I can adjust this head. I can get rid of this head and draw it exactly where it needs to be. Neck here.
the corner of the hole. Staff. And now we need to determine where his leg is. It looks like there's like some foreshortening because he's sitting, like sitting on some stone. This is what's cool about this picture is it's not like you don't have any rigid straight edges. You can um, improvise, you know. So I'm going to go ahead and foreshorten his leg. Foot looks like it's coming around here. Foot is here. This foot is around here. So I can go ahead and kind of determine where his skeleton is. That's like foreshortening there. So we got our, um, our figures down. Now I'm going to go in with my PC935 Prisma Kemp pencil. I've, uh, I, got, I got just enough to draw with. I'm going to go ahead and um, work on the face and some of the hands, and then we'll start talking about the drapery. All right, so I got the uh, the face, the hands down, a little bit of the feet. So now we're going to be getting into the principles of the drapery on here. Now, one thing I learned from Vincent Desiderio, there's, there's some triangles in here that we can apply to this. And I'm going to show you right now. So I'm going to go with a pencil. So here we have draperies coming off on the arm. Okay. Triangle. Coming down here, triangle. Um, here we got a flap, it flaps over. This comes down, flaps over. Okay, and right here, triangle. So right now we have, we have tri triangle here, triangle here, Triangle here, a triangle here. Now here it drapes. It drapes down. We have our anchor point right here. So it drapes down. Um, we have that here. This here. And it kind of um, it hits the ground. It creates its own, its own shape right there. Comes up, and then, and then we have um, Andrew Lemus says, "Don't worry about every wrinkle and every fold." So, we're not going to worry about how many folds are in there. We're just going to make it look like a nice drawing. So here we have the hood triangle. This kind of comes over here. Okay, triangle. Here. Now we have all these interesting shapes in here that we can kind of simulate, but remember, don't have to make it perfect. It doesn't have to be exact. Okay, triangle, small triangle right there. Really comes up here, kind of floats. It's like uh, the way it creases, it, it brings a kind of floats over. That makes sense. So this, this comes over. Now we have like a, almost like a nest shape right here. 
goes around, creases in, around. Now this, this from here, as part of this, kind of folds over. We have a triangle here, and it connects. Uh, we have this part that floats over, comes around, and then it it sits on the sits on our stone over here. Triangle here, oops, triangle here. Comes down, triangle here. This comes around. Now here, um, this comes around here. But you see, what I was saying about abstract shapes, you have a line here. So what I'm seeing is a nose. It's like a nose. It's like there's a nose, which is a triangle shape. And then we have another triangle shape that comes down here. We have one here. One's here. Here. We have a triangle shape here, it's around. Here. So now that we have the drawing finished, let, I'm going to go ahead and render, render this, and um, we'll go on to the next drawing. So let's make this a nice finished drawing, and then we'll continue with the next one.
All right, moving on to page um, 193, talks about drawing half tones and shadows. He's saying, study, uh, this, this is a study for a story illustration, typical procedure of drawing half tones and shadows only, leaving lights white. So I want to use this, um, I want to use this reference of Marlene Dietrich. I think it's, it's a pretty good um, example. You don't really see the edges of her sleeve. You squint your eyes. You don't see the collar. You don't see the edges of her sleeves and um, a little bit of her hands. Let's see if we can make this successful. So let's try this. And starting with a light pencil drawing, um, drawing our mannequin frame. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, render her face. Okay, so now that I have my head in, I had my hands in, you can see that I left open space where the light comes in. And that's the whole purpose of doing this exercise is the, the, the light is going to be just white paper. And then you have your shadows and half tones. And one thing you want to do if you're working with this type of paper is Draw in your stuff with a, a regular HB pencil because you can't erase the uh, this 935 um, Prismacolor black. You just can't erase it. So, all right. So now we got this the head, and now we can work on the uh, the um, clothing and then the way it falls. And so if you squint your eyes, um, a triangle here. Crease in there. And I should have left that white, but that's okay. Um, I have this triangle here. Squint your eyes. That's basically all you see. Just a little bit of a tendon right there. So, so we have our sweater. I see where she bends. There's a crease here, a little crease there, crease there. Folds in. It's all tone. Let's do like one tone first, and then we'll go in and see where we need to adjust it. Okay. So now this kind of it comes over like this. So we're going to do like a darker shadow here. Like so. And then it's darker here. And we can chisel that color out. Sticks out more. And we got a little indication of the breast right here. Breast here. And where it bends underneath, there's a strong shutter right there. So 
Okay. So here we don't erase this. A little too high. A little too bony looking there. If you squint your eyes, you don't see anything here. You see a little bit, just a little like the anchor points where it's anchoring off of that. You see crease of the sleeve. Notice there's like a hint. And then arm. Arm's a little too long, but it's okay. Don't really worry about the arm. Just concentrating on our break right little triangle shadow right there. That tends, tends, is all tender. We'll go on the other side. We don't see too much going on here, but we do see this crease right here. Triangle. Just a little bit of tension. Not exact, but it's close. Alrighty. Now we get into the pants. And as you can see the way her leg is bent, it's almost like you see the natural the natural um, look of a pants that are on your on your leg is kind of just hanging. You just have a small anchor, like from here, all the way down here is like an anchor. Way it's pleated, it's almost like it's just a flat, it's almost flat. Triangle there, you have like these. Folds um, from the hand in the pocket. One around. Yep. And then we'll just have this. And we see the pleats in the bottom. Start our foot. Shadow in the foot. And on this side is where it's really creased. So we got like a, it's almost like um, a triangle here. And it's almost like a smiley face. So I'm saying like a, a weird smiling face. And then under here, we have another triangle. It's almost like a Y here. And then we have this here, and that's a triangle. This comes around and the anchor points like from the um with the leg is sticking out it's um you have anchor points coming in here 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 Then where the knee bends, we got some major triangles going on. We have a triangle going on like this here. A triangle on a triangle. So you have like two triangles on against each other. And then like split it down the middle. Comes around. 
triangle there, triangle there. Have a foot in the shadow. So you can see how it's bending. So, um, yeah, this drawing's finished. I'm gonna go ahead just and render, render it up, make it a nice drawing. So now we're going to switch gears up a little bit and work on some inking and the brush and splatter technique. So instead of, you know, like the previous drawings, I'm just going to do my own drawing based on the example that Andrew gives us. I think it'll be a little more exciting and a little more um, original. So let's, let's go ahead and go back to the basics. Let's see.
So now we have our, our basic um, pencil drawing down. We can go and start inking. So for the inking portion, I'm going to be using the same tools I used for the last inking tutorial I did. Okay, so for the shadow on her face, I'm going to be using point one, and I'm going to go in the direction of her contours of her face. Here's like shadow. Shadow right there.
All right, so now we're at the end of the book, and um, I, I really think, you know, you sh they should have had, like, drawing supplies, and just this poor person's just spent from, from just going through this book, you know, having, like, pieces of paper, drawings, and this is Andrew Lumis going, you can do it. Um, but in the closing chat, you know, he just talks about if you want to be an artist, it takes work. It doesn't just take talent. It takes hard work because, um, you know, you can you can draw, you can have talent, but it's the hard work that that pays off. You know, it's the hard work that gets you past the other person. Because I'm going to tell you right now, there's always going to be someone out there working way harder than you than you or I, trying to get that job, trying to get that attention. And they're, they're going to do everything they can to work as hard as they can. And there's always someone working harder than you. So that makes you, that should give you the inspiration to try to work harder. And he talks about, um, you know, how, how it works in the, uh, the magazine business, the newspaper business, the comic book business, um, doing covers, running your studio, and, you know, having um, a, a file cabinet full of reference, uh, you know, under alphabetical order. And he talks about your prices. He talks about when you're starting out, um, you really can't charge a lot of money. You have to really start low and then work your way up and, and as um, you grow a, uh, um, a clientele. And a, um, as you develop a reputation, you can start hiring your prices but until then you had to really start low and establish yourself and then establish a reputation to where people says oh I like this guy I want to use him and then you can you can hire your prices and from what I understand like these guys got paid really well it's been a journey for sure and ever since I started this series I've gained like over a thousand subscribers. I've got my eyes, so I appreciate that. And I've learned a lot. I mean, I've learned a whole lot. Now, I'm not just, I'm not done now with Loomis. I've still got a couple of things I want to do as far as, um, I want to do something in Procreate on an iPad, as far as setting up the, um, the measurements of the, the mannequin figure. And then I would like to do a wheel painting. I do like a master copy of uh, Andrew Loomis painting, so. So yeah, so it's been a blast, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I have. And um, I had I didn't go over every part of the book, and I, and I didn't go through the the closing chat of each chapter because it really didn't relate to anything that we did. It has more to do with uh, real case scenarios in the art art world as far as advertising is concerned. We're not really I wasn't really going to go over that because. I think times have changed since then, and I think Photoshop has like just wiped out advertising um, artwork. And uh, but yeah, it's been it's been fun. And um, so if you like what you see, just uh, please consider subscribing, um, liking it, and leave a comment because it helps throw me into the algorithm. You know, when people type in Andrew Loomis, you know, I'm I'm in one of the slots, the top the top ones, the top guys. And uh, so anyway. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again.